Hey guys, welcome to another Trade Genius Podcast. Philip here, Bob is still on vacation. So I thought we would dive into some more Bitcoin and specifically the ETF. A lot of chatter about whether or not BlackRock is good for Bitcoin or not and whether this ETF that they're introducing is good for Bitcoin or not. So I'm gonna show you a chart, very interesting stuff. You're not gonna wanna miss it. So let's dive in. Trade Genius. Hey guys, I'll tell you something that we do that really will change the way in which you look at trading and also absolutely help you increase your profitability and how much money you make. It's the Trade Genius newsletter. We put the newsletter out Sunday night through Thursday night, and this really looks at the plumbing of the markets and helps prepare you for the next trading day and help you make money. And, and we give you a lot of information. We give you market statistics. We give you market levels. We give you the seasonality, what's happening with different sectors of the market, and we will help you identify whether the market's in a bear mode or a bull mode, or whether it's euphoric, whether it's despondent, and it just puts you in a position to be on the right side of the trade. So Take advantage of our offer that we have below and you'll love it. I mean, one trade that you make with this thing could pay for definitely a month, maybe even a year's worth of service. It's that powerful. Use promo code podcast for 15% off the retail price of newsletter. Thanks for listening. All right, guys. So, you know, a lot of people are worried that BlackRock getting into the Bitcoin space is going to be a bad thing. And some people are arguing the opposite. So what I wanted to do was show you guys what happened in the past when something like a commodity has gotten an ETF introduced. Specifically, we're going to take a look at what happened with gold. So let's jump into the charts over here. Now, what you're going to see up here on the top is a chart of gold. And on the bottom, we have a chart of Bitcoin. So you'll notice, interestingly, that the structure on gold was similar to what we have seen in the past with Bitcoin, right? You have this push up and then you have a big pullback consolidation. Uh, but you'll notice that when the gold ETF was introduced. Notice what happened to the price. This is a 10 year span now, guys, of just very linear, great looking trend, right? You know, almost a 45 degree angle, just beautiful trend, a little volatility here in the middle. But nonetheless, you had a 10 year run basically with no dramatic pullbacks compared to what we've seen in the past volatility wise. So now here we have Bitcoin at the bottom. So you see similar volatile peak, right? And then, you know, 80% pullback, which is something that we've gotten used to with the Bitcoin cycles. So so, you know, our ETF era technically started here, but these weren't true spot ETFs like what we got up in gold, right? This is still derivative based, futures based, the CME futures, right? Those are all derivatives. They're not really spot funds, but that's what is being introduced here by BlackRock and their application to the SEC is that it's a spot ETF. So whether you like BlackRock or you think that this is probably some devious way of holding or suppressing the Bitcoin price, one thing you have to keep Keep in mind is that even with the suppression of metals, look what happened to gold as it was then introduced to the masses, right? This would be like introducing it to the boomers, right? And so when you have an ETF that's readily available, that is from a big entity like BlackRock, you're going to have more people that are trusting of that and they're going to add it to their portfolios. I mean, that's just the way it is. And BlackRock knows this. And I think what's happening here is, you know, the big banks and things like that have realized they missed the boat initially on Bitcoin. They're never going to control the majority of Bitcoin because that was already taken up by the early adopters, right? By the time they showed up, all the majority of Bitcoin had been taken up. So, but what they can do is sell you the, the shovels, right, of the Bitcoin action. And so that's where they want to be positioned as exchanges or running these funds because they've looked at what things like GBTC have done, right? They make big money off those fees. And as the price of Bitcoin looks to be going parabolic over the coming years, those fees can get pretty enormous. So as we look and zoom out here on the Bitcoin price, I just took and, and you know, extrapolated a similar move modeled off of what happened with gold. And here's what it looks like uh, down below. Expand this chart up here a little bit. And you can see, you know, a similar run like that over, you know, the course of 10 years. I mean, you're, you're looking at valuations that are just astronomical, right? Now, this is just basing it on the same trajectory. Now, this trajectory actually isn't outlandish because you're looking at a, an asset that there's just not going to be available supply, right? And this is what we keep saying is that sooner or later, you're going to get a supply shock move. You're just going to get a move that's never going to come back down and it's going to be a sustained move. 
And I could see this, the same structure playing out with Bitcoin. You know, at this level here, you're already at 14 million right here at this level, all right, going into 2030. So, you know, it, it can get really stupid, right? But you have to understand the way supply and demand works is that, look, when there's no supply and the last of the supply is controlled by the miners, the price of one Bitcoin is going to be astronomically higher. So, you know, it's not outside the realm of possibility that you're going to see valuations in the millions, okay, over the course of 10 years. Now, maybe this is a little too optimistic, but I think you can see that to get to a million isn't that much of a stretch right? I know everyone's looking at 100,000. My feeling is by the time we get 100,000, there's gonna be so much built up pressure from all of the work put in from the bullish structure beforehand, that will probably cruise right through the 100k. And that'll be, you know, people will probably think that's a big level that gets rejected. And it probably just goes right through it. And it's not much of an area in the big scheme of things. But that's why I say, you know, you have to be positioned long, you have to have your hodl stack. Yes, you can trade it, you know, that's fine, too. But you got to have that stack for that long term. This is not a sprint. This is a marathon with Bitcoin because the upside is so huge. And I really do think that once it does take off and you do see that supply squeeze, all of the altcoins and things like that are not going to be able to keep up. So while you do have a window where alts do gain against Bitcoin in spurts and sometimes quite a bit, over time, you're going to see most alt BTC valuations just get ground into nothing where they wouldn't even be worth a sat on I think a lot of these alts. Now there are going to be some alt plays, don't get me wrong, but I think once this dynamic takes hold, very little will be able to keep pace with the price acceleration of Bitcoin. And I think it's just going to be your greatest hedge against inflation. And of course you can be diversified, but I think this one has this one asset has the really has the ability to outperform everything else, especially when you look at it in terms of outpacing inflation. So anyway, I thought I would share this with you guys. I think that long term and historically, when you look at something like gold and BTC, you know, for all intents and purposes is gold 2.0, very bullish effects because you're essentially lowering the barrier of entry for a lot of people that may not have wanted to buy a GBTC fund because, you know, it trades on the pink slips and, you know, they're not, they're not too comfortable with that. But, you know, you bring in uh, someone like BlackRock and, and a full fledged ETF, spot ETF like this, you'll get more people, a lot more people uh, involved in as far as flows and you'll have pension funds and you name it, will be uh, putting money to work if that uh, BlackRock ETF is uh, approved. So all in all, I see net bullish for this. I don't see price manipulation because again, the Bitcoin blockchain is transparent and you know what the supply is. Uh, unlike metals, you have to trust the third party to figure out what's where and, and supply and all that stuff. Where Bitcoin, you don't have that issue. It's all transparent. So I do think it's a bit different than metals suppression in that regard and, and why it can't really be suppressed because everyone knows what the supply demand metrics really are. All right, guys, well, that's going to do it for this video. Please hit like and subscribe. Let us know your thoughts below. Do you like the idea of the ETF? Do you like my idea that it's ultimately going to be bullish for Bitcoin? Love to hear from you guys. And I'll see you on the next video. Take care, guys. Bye-bye. Trade